Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, today this is going to look a little different because I'm recording it in a different format, so bear with me. Today we're going to talk about conversion problems, and I need to record it in this format so that I can draw on the screen. So um, let's take a look at our um, at our stuff. Essentially, conversion factors are a ratio of equivalent measurements, and they have no limit on the significant figures. You don't do any rounding for sig figs until the very end of the process, so please don't get yourself messed up there. You want to choose the factor that gets rid of the units that you don't want. And so conversion factors are essentially just unique ways of writing the number one. So for example, one meter over 100 centimeters. Well, we know that there's 100 centimeters in a meter and there's 100 centimeters over here. So 100 centimeters over 100 centimeters is just equal to 1. In the same system, they're defined quantities and they have unlimited sig figs, so just remember that. Equivalent statements always have this relationship. Big numbers of small units equals small numbers of big units. For example, there's 1,000 millimeters in 100 centimeters. So in this case we can write 100 centimeters here and 100 centimeters here because 1 meter equals 100 centimeters. So this is still a factor of 1. So that should give you an idea of kind of how we're doing the conversions. So I want you to write conversion factors for the following and I'm going to walk, this, walk you through this. Kilograms to grams. So we know that 1 kilogram is equal to a thousand grams. Feet to inches, one foot equals 12 inches. And miles to kilometers, you probably don't know this one off the top of your head, but one mile equals 1.61 kilometers. And an easy way for me to remember that one is that 55 miles per hour is equal to 88 kilometers per hour. And so you're able to take 88 divided by 55, and that gives you a factor of 1.61. Okay, again, remember, conversion factors are called that because they allow us to convert units, and it's really just multiplying by one in a creative way. It's your job to choose the factor that gets rid of the units that you don't want. Dimensional analysis is using the units to solve the problems. You work on the units first and then worry about the numbers second. And that's where chemistry really gets involved and this is where people trip over themselves if they're not careful. If the units of your answer are right, chances are that you did the math right as far as the numbers are concerned. So they'll follow as long as you got the units right. In order to perform dimensional analysis, you must know the conversion factors first. Either they'll be common ones, or I will have given them to you. If it has a prefix such as nano, kilo, etc., get rid of it with the conversion factor in one step. To add a prefix, use a conversion factor in one step. Okay, so let's take a look at this practice problem. How many liters are there in 25 milliliters? Well, we write our known quantity first, 25 milliliters. And then we know how many milliliters there are in a liter. We want the liters on top because that's the quantity we're looking for. So we want to get rid of the milliliters. And so we know that there's 1,000 milliliters in one liter. When we do that out, these milliliters get crossed out. So you end up with 0 0.025 liters. And I know this isn't super neat writing, but it is at least writing, and you can see me do it as we go. So bear with my bad handwriting skills on a tablet. Okay, so here's one that's been done out for you because I forgot to erase it. 5.8 times 10 to the negative 6 millimeters is how many nanometers? Well, remember there's 1,000 nanometers in 1 millimeter. So 1,000 is also the same as writing 10 to the third. 
So we you can say 10 to the third times 5.8 times 10 to the negative sixth. That gives you negative third because you just add the exponents. So you end up with 5.8 times 10 to the negative third nanometers. Okay, so let's try this one. How far is 8.3 millimeters in millimeters? Well, you start off with your quantity that you know. Then you convert the milli to meters in one step. So we know that we have one meter here, and we know that there's a thousand millimeters in one meter. So that gives you 8.3 times 10 to the third millimeters. How heavy is 1.56 times 10 to the tenth micrograms in kilograms? Okay, now I know I tell you to do it in one step, but I'm going to do it in two steps here because I want you to understand how micro goes in. So 1.56 times 10 to the tenth micrograms. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change micrograms to grams. So there are 10 to the sixth micrograms in one gram. Okay, and then we do grams to kilograms. So one kilogram has 10 to the third grams. Okay, so we take 10 to the sixth plus 10 to the third, so we add the exponent says 10 to the ninth. 10 to the 9th divided under 10 to the 10th gives you 10 to the 1st. So that gives us 15.6 kilograms. Or you can be really obnoxious about it and say 1.56 times 10 to the 1st, but it's kind of stupid. Okie dokie. So let's take a look at the rules. In the same system, there are unlimited significant figures. So if you're doing metric to metric or imperial to imperial, it's unlimited. When you convert from one system to another, the conversion factor has as many as the most significant figures in the measurement. So in this case, you've got one inch is 2.54 centimeters. So in this example, you would have one significant figure because one inch equals 2.54 it's actually 543 centimeters. Well, your answer has to be in one sig fig. And I will use the term sig fig instead of significant figures because it's faster. Okay, for the last part of part one of this lecture, I'm going to show you one practice question. So this is a conversion from imperial to metric and vice versa. So a race is 10 kilometers long. How far is this in miles? And I've given you two conversion factors. 1,760 yards is a mile, and a meter is 1.094 yards. So we start with what we know, which is the 10.0 kilometers. So we'll write that out. We convert to meters because that's the one we have. So we know that there's 1,000 meters per kilometer. Now we're going to do that in yards. So we want meters on the bottom and yards on the top. Notice I'm not multiplying anything as I go because we're going to do that all at the end. So we've gotten rid of our kilometers. We've gotten rid of our meter units. Now let's put it in miles. One mile because we want that one on top because it says how far is it in miles, so it tells you what unit you're looking for, divided by 1,760 yards. And that gets rid of our yards unit. So you double check and make sure that the only unit standing is the one you want, and that's miles, and that's right here. Okay, so now we take the 10 times 1,000 times 1.094 you put that in your calculator, 
and then you divide it by 1760, and your answer comes out to be 6.216 miles. But again, remember it's conversion from metric to imperial and vice versa, so you can only use the least number of significant figures. So to put it in significant figures, we only have one, and that means that it's six miles. Okay, we'll pick up with part two next.